You must have an understanding of yourself. Look around you. See the beautiful mountains, the salubrious breezes, the wonderful vegetation. But because of your disposition to each other, you live in want and in debt and in penury. You have no love for each other and you hate yourselves. Black men and black men, what is wrong with you? Why have you no love for yourself? Can I hope to see you living like those I've spoken of? Living in want and in charity? It can be done. Why say that the worst of the nature? Mother Nature never gave death, pain, and suffering to the world. It's man who selected death, pain, and suffering. So let me impress upon you once again that whatsoever your hardships, whatsoever your difficulties in life, they are your own selection. And if you husband them and you keep them to your bosom, they will abide you with you. Mother Nature will not take them away from you because she did not give them to you. She represents all that is beautiful. Oh, if you want joy, if you want sunshine, it is before you abundantly in nature. <coughs> and you said it to laugh with the stars and laugh with the moon. Sing to the birds and the trees and in the forest. And the winds that come from east and to west. And I feel that Sarai would have been there a long time ago. <coughs> you must have a knowledge of life. Black men and black women, why wouldn't you get the same knowledge that the white man has that makes him masters and leaders of the world? They're not God to the peculiar source of understanding the world around them. They want to get an expression to the whole humanity and be able to use it for their satisfaction and glory. Why is it that wherever you find you're in the presence of the white man that you have to go down and defeat before him? Answer that for yourself, black men and black women. Why is it that wherever the white man is that you have to go down and defeat, yet he has two hands, two feet, same patterns, same feelings, same desires, just like any other race? The grand race all over the world of Canada for the Canadians, of America for the Americans, of England for the English, of France for the French, of Germany for the Germans. Do you think reasonable we, the blacks of the world, can raise a cry of Africa for the Africans? The Negroes are wrong. We represent the new Negro. His back is not yet against the wall. But do not want his back against the wall because that would be a peculiar and desperate position. We do not want it there. It's because of this that we are asking for a fair compromise. Well, the Belgians have control of the Belgian Congo, which they cannot use. They have not the resources to develop, nor the intelligence. The French have more territory than they can develop. There are certain parts of Africa in which you cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. We are never going to be a rest of the country. God never intended it, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, presented under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Africa has been sleeping, not dead. Right. Only sleeping. Right. Today, Africa is right. walking around not only on our feet, but on our brains. Yeah. You can enslave us, we done for 300 years, the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men. But you cannot shackle the hands of men. And deep. Reach out black men and women and pull all nature's knowledge to you. Turn you around to make a campus of everything, north and south, east and west, and then when you will have wrought well, you will have merited God's blessings. And as you bow down to the white man today, so will other races bow down to you and call you a race of masters because of the superiority of your minds and your achievements. We must canonize our own sins. Create our own matters and elevate the positions of fame and honor. Black men and women who have made a distinct contribution to our racial history. Yeah. So join the truth is worthy of a place alongside the throne of art. Yes, Christmas, Alex and George, William Garden are entitled to a hero of martyrdom with no less glory than that of the martyrs of any other race. Yeah. Africa has produced countless millions of men and women in war and in peace whose luster and bravery outshine that of any other people. Then why not see good and perfection in ourselves? God made man Lord of his creation, gave him possession and ownership of the world, and you have been so tired and lazy that you've allowed the other fellow to run away with the whole world, and now he's bluffing you and telling you that the world belongs to him and that you have no part in it. I don't have to apologize to anybody for being black because God Almighty you. You raise up imbeciles. You raise up good for nothing. If you cannot do what other men have done, what other nation 
sins have done, what other races have done, then you had better die. Because any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. Let me say that again. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. They gave leadership to our four parents and that leadership made them slaves. But we decided to find a leadership of our own to make ourselves free men. Babylon did it. Assyria did it. France under Napoleon did it. Britain under William Pitt, Arnold Chatham did it. Germany under Prince von Bismarck did it. America under George Washington did it. Africa with 400 million black people can do it. If you cannot do it, if you are not prepared to do it, then you might as well just die. Because when the history, when the history of my suffering is complete, Future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of the 20th century. I know and I know you too believe in time, but we shall wait patiently for 200 years, if need be, to face our enemies for our posterity. In life I shall be the same, in death I shall be a terror. and make your enemies triumph over you. Will I not go to hell a million times for you? Yes. If I die in prison in Atlanta, my work shall only just begin. But I shall live in the physical or the spiritual to see who they are. <laughs> when I am dead, not the night of the red, not the green around me, for in this human life, I shall rise up with God's grace and blessings to bring the heights of the millions in the colors that you well know. Look for me in a world and I'm a star. Negro, yet everyone beneath his breath was calling the black man a nigger. But I had to decide 
I got it to please my friends and be one of the black fights in Jamaica and be reasonably prosperous or come out openly and help improve and protect the integrity of the black millions and suffer. And it's that it's really really. Because I came into the Caucasian culture at a time when the white man still had a need for the black man's labor. I preached and penetrated the black man's consciousness to such a degree that the white man felt threatened by me taking away so much black time and attention. Whites find it hard to sit idly by and see this black man take their slave labor away, especially back to Africa. Who then would bear the white man's point? But I believe that my blood shall pay the remission for which future generations shall be declared free. Freedom of opportunity are things that we need so that we can have an imperial power to be able to withstand any nation and any race. Vile talks bring vile actions to vile people living in vile times. You could not tell me in the 1920s that 90 years later this world would be infested with neutron bombs AIDS, homelessness, terrorism, visible nuclear devastation. Were I alive today, I would still encourage for my people's uplifting, self-esteem, self-reliance, self-respect in a world gone crazy with individualism. I never taught racism but rather pride and dignity in one's face. Right. Right. With, God's, with God's dearest blessings, I'll leave you for a while one love. Some of you in this room may not have been born at that time. <laughs> it was at the UNIA International Convention held August 17th through August 20th at Garvey Memorial Hall, 1609, 1611, Columbia Avenue in Philadelphia, now called 64 Avenue. I'm going to skip way down to a place of special emphasis. It says special emphasis was placed on changing of the name Universal Negro Improvement Association the Universal African Improvement Association. It was decided that every legal effort be made to thoroughly investigate the matter, and whenever feasible, make the name change. But by all means, see to it that the assets of the organization be preserved so that no loss will come to the people. 1973. 1973. I wanted to read that because truly, saying the Universal African Improvement Association was thoughts on the minds of the ancestors after the 20s. All right. So one of the things I want to try and bridge is the gap between the time of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, 19, 1914 until 1940, and put in place some timelines coming forward. And one other thing I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to call our next presenter, is 1942. It would take a year, it could have been 42, 43. The Honorable James R. Stewart moved the parent body headquarters to Liberia. Understand? Part of Garvey's dream 
was a base in Africa. All of that was realized in 1922. So the things I will mention will try to give you some emphasis because the emphasis is on study and education. So our ancestors, not just Mr. Garvey, the men and women that worked with him, who upheld that vision, are the people that I will read to you. So that if I can inspire anyone to do some reading, I want you to know that the history that I'm talking about has not been written yet. The history of the U.S.A. has not been written yet. And see, you're part of that history. This also has to be more about. But now I want to bring to you another voice from history to give you another lesson. Nanny Helen Burns. Uplift our people. 
1914, when this government, Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League was founded, I was 35 years old. The school I founded in 1909, the National Training School for Girls and Women in Washington, D.C., was five years old. I was already an established and well-known advocate for women and girls throughout the United States and abroad in a time where racism and sexism was fierce and mighty. But I saw fit to do the work that God sent me to do, and that was to found a school to uplift little girls and create women who could be race proud, create homes and communities to serve our people. And so, I have organized thousands of women throughout the United States to support me in the building of my school. A lifelong Baptist, I want you to know, the ministers never, ever supported the founding of this organization. In 1900, at the age of 21, I became known for delivering a speech to the National Baptist Convention to thousands of people where I implored the ministers of that convention, which I never left, to please help a sister out. <laughs> you see the need, what's going on in the times, where black women and girls were at that time? Can you help a sister out? I'm just trying to do the work that God told me to do, but no. So, I was not deterred. I organized many, many, many people. And they gave a dollar here and a dollar there, a few hours here, some back labor there. And so by 1909, I had purchased some land on a holy hill in Northeast Washington, D.C. Had built some structures and opened up a school with 35 young women from the United States, Africa, and the Caribbean walked through those doors. By 1920, when this major convention occurred here in New York City, I had educated over 1,300 young ladies. I want you to know the work that you were doing and the work that I did is no easy task. Always big and straight. Always looking for a dollar here, looking for a dollar there. But do not be deterred. Because I want you to know, it can happen if you just continue to set your mind on what God has you to do. It will all unfold, and you will be surprised at where it comes from, who it comes from, and the reason why we do it. So let me tell you a little bit about the times that we really been in. They're much like the times that you are in right now. Our people were hungry. The blood was flowing on the streets. They were homeless. And they were very poorly paid for the work that they did. And so, women also were second class citizens. You see, we didn't have the right to vote at that time. And we were doing work where we were not compensated fairly, cooking and cleaning, in white folks' homes and not getting adequate pay. So what I did with some other women was to form an organization called the National Wage Earners Association. Where we lobbied, yes, we lobbied, for fair wages for black women and others who were doing the domestic science trade as well as other work that was needed to be done. My teacher, you see, is Anna Julia Cooper, who I'm sure some of you have heard of, taught me that we are our sister's people. All right, now. We are our sister's people. All right. Women in this place. All right. And so, as I said, education was the most powerful tool for our progress. And it was a powerful tool for protest. So I stood with some other sisters, Mary McLeod the Good. Come on. All right, now. Charlotte Hawkins Brown. All right. And later on, we became the 
known as the three B's of education. Burroughs, Brown, and Luther. I valued the domestic sciences, and that was what my school focused on that in other days, because my mother was a professional in the domestic sciences. She taught me that cleanliness is next to God. God. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. And so, as I said, I saw a need and I decided to educate women at the time to do the things that was needed. Clean, cook, sew, yeah. cut head, cur curl head, print, do laundry. These are the things that we provided in my school. We printed, and I'll have you know, we washed the white underwear of everybody in the White House at the time. Mm -hmm. They saw fit in the Hoover administration to bring all their laundry business to the girls in my school. Okay. We were playing around because I, like Barbara, believed in self-reliance self and self-sufficiency. Well, and too many of our young women were going to school to get an education so they could be a school teacher. Well, guess what? In racist times those days, you could get that education, but you couldn't get a job being a school teacher, especially in that racist South. They needed to learn skills where they could get paid until they were able to break through the barriers and teach in the schools in this nation. So, I would like you to know this. When I believe in Harvard, I did it, and I taught my girls to do it. My young women boarded at that school, so we grew the vegetables that we ate. All right. When the plumbing broke, we towed those buckets up the hill from the spring. When the road was icy and the cold truck couldn't get up, I gave them buckets, told them to go down there, get the cold, bring it up here so we can keep these buildings. When the dorms were not sufficient, we cleaned out the barn and we made dormitory space. When I needed another classroom, we went to the stables, cleaned the stables out, and made another classroom. We did what was required so that we could do the work that we were sent to do. These are the basic principles of being self-sufficient and self-reliant. You do not need to ask, you just do. Well, like myself, Mr. Garvey was unapologetically for and about his people. His people, yes. He also was a very passionate orator, as we heard, and organizer. Yes. These traits moved the masses in those times in a way that was never done prior to our time. Right. And myself and a few others knew how to motivate and mobilize black folks in this country and throughout the world. So, when I think of Mr. Garvey, I think of another person named Nan. This woman, as some of you know, was from the Ashanti people of West Africa. She was brought to Jamaica as a slave, and she saw fit to escape slavery and flee to the hills of Garvey's homeland of Jamaica. Queen Nanny, or Brandy Nanny of the Maroons, as some people like to call her, freed over 800 slaves in Jamaica. She was responsible, along with others, a compound being one, for developing maroon towns, which had one way in and one way out. And this is how they defeated the British time and time and time again. Queen Nanny, like Mark of God, went on to become a Jamaican national hero. Now, how do we do this? Well, I would 
tell you, she, God, and myself worked in spiritual realm. She was an old male woman who was also a medicine woman. Godly and myself were firm believers in God. And we listened and communicated to the Most High to get our direction right. as to where we were supposed to go, right. who we were supposed to talk to, right. and what we were supposed to be doing. This, I tell you, is how you get things done. What God has for you, yeah. God has for you. Be obedient. Listen. Be still, listen, listen. and then move. That's right. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. So, all I have to tell you is that there are a lot of folks on the other side where I came from who are very, very, very proud of what you are trying to do. Amy Ashwood, God. Yeah. Amy Johnson, Henrietta Kitten, yeah. Adam Demi, yes. Ed King, all right now. and many others. Alma Gold, oh yeah. Oh. They all love their people. Yes. And I have come to know in the ancestral world that they loved them then, and they still love them today. So as your President General, Senor Valle, often says, the ancestors are waiting and watching. And watching. Yes. So you are celebrating your centennial, and this is a glorious time. My school, whose name was changed from the National Training School for Girls and Women to the Nanny Helen Girls School, we made our centennial in 2009. All right. But I will tell you, by 2011, the doors were closed. Oh, Due to lack of support, and people just forget about what we need to do for our children. So do not take this right if you intend to be here for another hundred or two hundred. That's right, The work needs to be tangible. You have to stop talking. Stop working. Stop working. The plans have been put in place. Yes. I heard you speak about them. I've been around listening all day long. You just didn't see them. <laughs> I've heard you. I know the things that you've been talking about, what you want to do. Get busy. Start doing it. Right. There is a little camp. In Washington, D.C., go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. which was founded by your first lady of this organization. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, they did. They guard. Yes. They meditate. They pray. They chant. They do yoga. They dance. They learn public speaking and some dramatic art skills as well. But most importantly, come on. They learn great pride. Great pride. They learn not only about me, but other strong black women of my time. Magdalena Walker, yes. who was one of my primary financiers. Raise it up, raise it up. Mary McLaughlin. All right. I'll be with it. And others. But I want to tell you the most important thing I tried. She tries to teach them. Is <laughs> 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 to love themselves yes. as girls and women. And to love others. They live in a time where 200 or so girls would just be kicked out from school in that year. Raise it up, raise it up. They live in a time where girls are being hung after they've been raped and assaulted in India. Black girls. Okay. They live in a time 
where girls are being picked up on the side of the street, prostituted. Uh -huh. They live in a rough time. But one of the things she teaches them is a little song. I want you to hear this song. Come on, come on. And I want you to learn this song. Come on. And I want you to teach this song to your children. It's written by a woman named Dr. Ricky Byers, who is a minister's wife, but she's also a minister at home, right? And it goes like this. I love myself so much that I can love you so much that you can love you so much that you can start loving me I love myself so much Come on, God. that I can love you so much that you can love you so much that you can start
participants, organizations, and ancestors here with us this evening. One hundred years. Look how far we've come. One hundred years. Can you see how far we have to go? One hundred years. Nothing short of sovereignty. One hundred years. One God.
sisters, I love it when you dress it up, but don't mess it up. Got that guys with it, stepping up in the fence. Tell me you teach, don't teach me no nonsense. All you hear is work to change style, condition that kitchen. Dismissing the fact that no matter how often you relax, I feel satisfied with the mess. Black soap, 
original state. Work it, work it. This song right here work it, work it. is our attempt to do something new. Come on, come on. Come on. Fall into thought and thought becomes scripture. I use beat pen in the pad to paint a picture. Sip the licks of the real rap mixture. Flows, melodies, styles, chemistries, applications of remedies you tweak from the past. We cleanse minds one at a time. It's still a task in this big picture of freedom. Hard lessons to learn, but we need them. Mistakes from the past, we can't repeat them. Welcome to the reason to show your love for hip hop. Welcome to the season to show your love for hip hop. Remember when we carry ground cardboard linoleum? Carry bags of spray paint made by stolen. Battle in the subways, cops start me fighting. Right. More than anything else, hip hop got me right. Formerly exciting my thoughts and how I viewed the world, because at first, it was just sports and girls, and then the message of her, Melly Mel and the Furious. Grandmaster Flash on the wheels had me curious. Yeah. Everybody feeling what I'm feeling? Yeah. Does everybody notice to this and never ain't seen What the hell can I shout this? What label must have got this? What three piece suit can turn this strange food into profits? The near perfect blend of pros and journalism. History lessons slash MC sessions. Research and wisdom that will allow to digest high. Connect to God, guns, imagination, introspection. Some it's infectious, but not to executives. They prefer we turn these brass songs into necklaces. Sign on the dotted line one time so they can show us. Uh, write us all what we sell us with one thrust of the pelvis. Get on the with some practice. They're like patent, just like Elvis. MJ tried to tell us these better companies with devils. Hip hop and corporations ties should be severed. Or at least we leverage, because we the proof in the beverage. From cocaine to crack rock, from lamp post to laptop. It was us who made new sound and roll backs. Paint yeah. trains on the tracks, yeah. like tops on our backs. Made the crowd clap, spit, love, peace, fun, and fact. What do you want to do now? Take it back. What do you want to do now? Take it back. What do you want to do now? Take it back. Check it. See you back then. We felt what we had. No mama was wrong. She said it was just a fad. Bless her heart. She didn't know the impact. Cause everybody wanted to rap and make tracks. Be a rap attack like DJ running down a map. Back when we were smack cats for Fader Jacks. But now it's hate. Cause you made a deal with Satan. You want the hood to get drunk and start celebrating? You a slave now. You want a toast to that? You get money, but you ain't in control of that. This way I'm sorry to say. One of the reasons worldwide this culture is felt, it's undeniable. And all participants are liable. What they say on the mic and how they live in their life with the gun or knife with the spiritual sight. It's all choice. I choose to make you and me choice. Boom, back the voice. This is a higher wordplay. It's the reason why I'm standing on this planet today. Hip hop is everywhere. Steady baby is hot. Then it started turning blue, so I gave the mic a mouth. Was always there for me when I was down and out. Used to play a little song. That feeling started coming up. Redemption. You want to reach out and touch it. The culture is our immune system. We got to flush it with water and sand. And then let's turn the page to peace, love, and unity. Fun in the community. Nothing they can do to we ever since. A puberty out of feeling like this. Even something's might be rough and might grip on the throat of our enemy. And the culture is just one of my tendencies. Off these coons like the kiddies. That's just one of my Straight up. Elders to accept. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of times we don't think this is a crossable bridge. Yes, yes, yes. I can say I was 44 years old. I'm 44. I'm not a spring chicken. I'm 44. You know what I mean? But we are the best in mind. We are the best in mind. If I was a spring chicken, I wouldn't be ready for this fact. 20 years. I'll be all night. Some of you, my master teachers, they're all familiar to you. But we are next in line. And I want you to know, call upon us. Yes, all right. Call upon us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This next cut, this next cut is on all my new album. And it's called The, cool, the Corner of Cool Work We Bought. And this is what it is. We are depicting, we are giving you a mental vision of how African culture and hip hop culture interwoven into a community. All right? We're going to, let's, let's take it to a place. Take it to a town called Ben Yes. On the corner of Cool Herb Street and 
love is God for the Lord. Where there's a culture, there's a community. With the application of peace, love, and unity. I like the unity, preference why I'm unity. See, being a puppet and seeing the opportunity to move your mind to the corner with full work and God. Children not corrupted adults, not discussed about what love says or Rick Ross, not surprised. Everybody agrees on the deeds in the sky. This is for penetrate where we reside. Purification of the diet we've been prescribed. Hindsight never lies. So the solution is implied when the babies can rise past the skies. Realize the actual. Deal with the factual. Write and make graffiti. Reborn IET. Streets paid for CDs, man. You can hear them in the whirlwind. Liberate a zone of our own as the world spins like vinyl under the fingertips of DJs. Like the merry-go-round where the seeds play. 360 degrees, our community was whole. We never had to sell our soul. Children on the corner of cool work and God, where creativity meets determination. The crossroads of self-knowledge and innovation. The cornerstone, the first block in the rebuilding of our nation within a nation. We're just pieces of the creator, co-creator. Any the man's gonna wait for change they make. Revolutionary reign on freedom? Nah, they take. American Africans destined to take the planet black again. Yeah. The black world looks to us to see what's happening. Right. And since we live in a nation built by us but not for us, some of us think we can remix the mercy to but still say the same call. In a nation built by us but not for us, we used to tap dance the capitalistic levels to acquire the character of those folks. In a nation built by us but not for us, thrive generations of oppressive forces with fanciful illusions of inclusion into their mighty fortunes. But we no longer deny the history into their nature. Uh -uh. Like Haggy Lee said, we got our own thing to replace. And we take it back to the basics. Like who hurt kicking in the crates with those things that are crazy. Like who cursed when Mama Harriet and Mama Martha said the faces. On the corner of two hurt the garbage where the political party goes the after bar. I celebrate the rebirth of black civilization. We built our nation with the nation on a strong foundation. I'm the field poet, with a story never told. The new school, right? being guided by no. Hold the high regard, how my community functions. Hip hop and nationalism in conjunctions. Assumptions are distinct in the village of clarity. Conflict is a rarity. We live in a society of all around us. Poor libation for the founders. Never give energy to the chaos around us. Children up and wear, the cherry in the air. Everybody is aware for that. We are prepared to defend, resurrect, show love and respect. Sweets in the sours, the minutes in the hours, developing the power to define our own reality, living in the lessons that wealth is in the sours. Now it's the formality, ascension and progression of black commerce, with no signs of recession. Because imagination is more powerful than information. That's right. Do supreme wisdom to foresee this vision. Learn the enemy, but conserve your energy. Unplug until we get our vision right. We can sight beyond sight to be victorious in this fight. That's right. Who hurt street and Marcus Garvey Boulevard? Yeah. Two boys from Yahoo who drew back child, but still made a template for vanguards. That's hard. Taking what was already in existence to advance the resistance. Ooh. Building atop our ancestors' insistence to be consistent and free from any confinement. Free to practice their culture in any environment. God was what's handsome as nationality alive. Jamaican or African, if he replied with, you must be wild. I'd never sacrifice a continent for an island. <laughs>
We have our CDs and stuff over there. Appreciate you so much for your attention. I want to, before we leave, I want you to uh, be aware of a platform that backs brothers and sisters like us. It is called movementtunes.com. Never go to iTunes again and get any black people. Especially if you're apologetic. Movementtunes.com. It is where you can get all the precise science catalog. If you just want one song, it's just a dollar. Just download it. It's not only conscious hip hop, but also conscious jazz, conscious reggae, audio books, spoken word. Brothers and sisters of this platform, I'm telling you, we need your help. We are not sponsored by the big, the, the whoever it is. All right? We signed a 360 deal with the Pink. All right? We're not going nowhere. Whether you donate or not. That's right. We're not going nowhere. But we got to ask you. So, we would like to bring to you the proprietor of MobileTunes.com, our brother, your brother, Maru. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, in 2002, I retired from practicing law and became a professional artist, a poet. And my vocation of being a poet led me to travel around the world, travel around the Caribbean, travel around Africa, doing Pan-African poetry. During my travels, I met artists from around the world who were world-class artists in their fields, but had no promotion and had great messages. So I decided to form MovementTunes.com because as Marcus Garvey said, he looked around and did not see men, uh, African men of great affairs, and he decided that he would make African men of great affairs and women of great affairs. And so I looked around and I did not see a place where there was conscious music in one place, and I decided that I would make a place for that's conscious right. music. And that's where we are, MovementTunes.com. I know I've been asked to do poetry, and I will do the poetry. I will do a very special piece for the sisters here. But um, movementtunes.com also realizes that it is for the people, and a percentage of our profits go to worthy causes. And this year, this is what's happening right now, is that our scholars who have done the research for us many times do not get the full rewards for their efforts and their work. And just as, as what Mama Merkel calls Yurugu, right. has their Mount Rushmore, we also have our metaphorical Mount Kilimanjaro. And it is not lost to me that we have a legend in our midst, that's Mama Marimba. Yes. I've never met Mama Marimba, but I've studied her work. And I'm telling you right now that MovementTunes.com is making a donation to Mama Marimba for the next six months. Every month she will receive $1,000 from MovementTunes.com. This is the reality. We're not, we're not, we're not playing games anymore. We're not just talking anymore. This is the reality. You do whatever you want with it. Whatever you want with it. You just give me your information and you will receive the money the first of the month, every month for the next six months. We take care of our people. We take care of our people. And we're not playing any games anymore. This is real. This is real. Those people who have dedicated their lives to our upliftment need reciprocity. 
And it's not enough for us to just say, thank you. Thank you. It's not enough for us to say, thank you for your work. We appreciate it and we enjoy it. Right. It's not enough, y'all. And anybody who wants to put five on it <laughs> can go ahead and do the same thing. Hello, movementunes.com. You can go to the site, you can contact me, figure out how you want to send Mama Marimba money for the next six months. We're doing it regardless of whoever else wants to do it with us. Okay? All right. Okay? All right. Um, so, Let's get into some poetry. Right? There were, there were two. Alright. I was saying, go on. I can't say no about the Bible so he says, go to the middle, I'll go to the middle. Um, there were two pieces that I've been asked to do. We only have time for one piece. So I'll let you all tell me which piece you want. I just give you the title. There's one piece called Goddess of the Perfect Black. And there's another piece, there's another piece called how did Amin Ra become Jehovah? Oh, that's not oh, that's a perfect oh, 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 this is just a punctuated version of, you know, I, I'm trained to do a three hour show, so uh, you can come tomorrow and we can rock out tomorrow, all right? All right. All right. So I'll give you something real quick. We get into the goddess of the perfect class. My only master is the one who made me, he, she, the bird, the bees, the trees, the seas, the breeze, we to be. One theory is that we come from monkeys, but after careful study, I can see the inconsistency. You see, human beings and monkeys, we live simultaneously. So the theory of evolutionary relativity, it cannot be. You see, the field of archaeology and anthropology, they are plagued by the lack of verity. No truth has ever found white supremacy. That's why they found three million euro bones of a black woman in Africa, but still they call her the European name of Luke. Goddess of the perfect black. Descend and show my people how to defend and react, yo. The goddess of the perfect black. You're the one who got into the head of Kofi, renamed Fred, and said we are not turning back, yo. The goddess of the perfect black. Speak to my people no longer cognizant of who we are. Instead of aligning ourselves with cosmic stars, we've aligned ourselves with cosmetics in cars. Prosthetics and jail bars are fused into the heads and the hearts of those who would choose and use and abuse tattoos to replace scars. Gil Scott Heron said Whitey's on the moon, but now Whitey is on Mars. And the universe was polluted once Hollywood actors became stars. Yes, Whitey is on the moon, and now Whitey is on Mars. But I'm sending out a universal caution. I've seen what they've done to the Earth, so now I'm rooting for the Martians. And you can call this intra-species or intergalactic treason. She'll change her tactics every season. She practices whatever she's preaching. There's nothing lacking in her teaching. She's got my backing whenever she's reaching. She and I are double teaming, so there's screaming and agreement. When it comes to the seed of my semen, some scheming you're appealing to be. So they push prophylaxis for a reason. Uh, she'll change her tactics every season. She practices whatever she's preaching. There's nothing lacking in her teaching. She's got her my back in whatever she's preaching. She and I are double teaming, so I'm screaming in agreement when it comes to the sea of my semen. So I'm screaming European and we're gazing and demons. So they push prophylaxis for a reason. She will change her tactics every season. Until this world is made into the image of she. Until this world is made into the image of me. Until this world is made into the image of we. Black people is not every fruit. That's part of your family tree. What about the ones that rock? What about the ones that got stopped? What about the ones who think not? What about the ones who inspire not? What about the ones who admire not? Remember, it's not every single vegetable that reached the black kettle yellow pot. Race first, give thanks, yo goddess of the perfect black. Descend and show my people how to defend and react, yo goddess of the perfect black. You're the one who got into the head of Kofi friend and said we are not turning back yo the eyes of the perfect black 
I came to resurrect your divinity. I came to notify the world of your nobility. And you were the one who was taken from the aisles of tranquility, and then you were shaken into the marriage captivity, and you were used to the marriage captivity, and you were abused to the marriage captivity, and you were refused to the marriage captivity, and you were raped to the marriage captivity, and you were escaped from the marriage captivity, only to return to the marriage captivity, so you could burn the marriage captivity. And they asked you, yes, they asked you about the marriage captivity. You said that you freed hundreds from the marriage captivity, but you freed thousands from the marriage captivity. Only they could have been convinced that they were the marriage captivity. Only they could have been convinced that they were the marriage captivity. And can I have a marriage captivity? Physical marriage captivity. Psycho spirit marriage captivity. Ooh, ooh, marriage captivity. I'm not captivity. Raise it first if thinks your goddess of the perfect black. To send and show my people how to defend and react. Yo, goddess of the perfect black. You're the one who got into the head of Kofi, we named Fred, and said we are not turning back, yo, goddess of the perfect black. Your name is much more than just symbolic, semantic, or titular. You're the calm and the storm that we're caught in the middle of. And the stories you tell of sages never change, they're always familiar. And the smell of treasures are strange, but also familiar. Yes, you're the calm and the storm that we're caught in the middle of. And nigga is a word reserved for those who would floss but lost their own kingdom to the ancient riddler. And cracker is a word reserved for those who would hijack and crack the backs of blacks to gain their own kingdom to the ancient riddler. She said, I need reparations and I need your fibula. I need it for a ritual. Embodiment of the physical is manifestation of the spiritual. Community concerns has gone from group to individual. Individual and singular. It's individual and singular. Community concerns has gone from group to individual and singular. She said, I need reparations and I need your fibula. Black history lessons is more than trivia. Ooh, I need reparations and I need your fibula. I need it for a ritual. Embodiment of the physical is manifestation of the spiritual. The universe ain't linear. No, the universe. Evidence by the planets which move elliptical. Let science be scientific and mathematics be mathematical. Let mathematics be mathematical and science be scientific. Tell me what happens when science goes political. The earth being flat was strictly political. Ancient Egypt, not black, was strictly political. The descendants of rebellious Jamaicans and Haitians living in shacks is strictly political. Hip-hop not defending blacks is strictly political. Stop listening to rappers who are rapping about killing you. Let gangsters be gangsters. Let lyricists be lyrical. African Americans, your love for America has never been reciprocal. Black Americans, your love for America has never been reciprocal. Negro Americans, your love for America has never been reciprocal. African Caribbean, your love for England has never been reciprocal. African Caribbean, your love for France has never been reciprocal. African Latinos, your love for Spain has never been reciprocal. The African diaspora, your love for your down princes has never been reciprocal. Did I cover all bases? Well, I hope you think so. The blood of Africa is the world's umbilical. Prove it or simple. The love of the black goddess by not preaching everything and anything biblical. Goddess of the perfect blood.
Some of us are staying in hotels. Some of us are staying in hotels, paying $100 a night. Staying in hotels. This is unacceptable. We have conventions all throughout the year of black organizations, and we end up staying in hotels in Richmond. Hotels. There is a website called Airbnb that was founded by some gurus where people sign up and they offer up their homes and you can go online and look at the apartments and you can decide to stay there instead of staying in a hotel. We needed Airbnb for us. I was happily to live in one in New York $100 a night to stay at their house instead of paying a hotel. But how can you do that? Now, my question is, is that who here is in internet technology? Is there anyone here who, okay. We need to meet after this in the back. Because what we're going to do, and I promise you we're going to do this, and those who know me, when I say something, it gets done. Yes, sir. Those who know me. We're going to put together a website that will be like Airbnb for Pan-Africans. Because we do travel, because we're Pan-Africanists, we have family, we have events that we have to go to different parts of the world, but many times we end up enriching hotels that have nothing to do with us. So instead of enriching the hotels, wouldn't it be nice if there were brothers and sisters here in Harlem who had their house open and were willing to open up their house and we were willing to pay them instead of paying the hotel. It has to stop. And it's going to stop today. So all of the people who raise their hands who are into internet technology, we're going to meet in the back after this. And we're going to get a delineated work schedule as to when we are going to launch this website. It has to happen before the end of this year. So, without further ado, this is somebody who energy when I'm his age. All of those who know Senghor know that Senghor has lion and tiger blood. This is not somebody this is not somebody who I've ever seen type. He's somebody who I've witnessed throughout the years. Many black people, because of our um, disempowered state, feel the men in our communities when we join organizations, we tend to have ego struggles with each other because everybody wants to be the chief. This is somebody who I have never, ever witnessed have an ego problem and power struggle with other brothers. It's my pleasure, it's my honor to introduce to you the President General Senghor
She just got back from... 
anyway, the gentleman in there made the 95. She just got back. Thank you.